What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about current news in Norway. Because as an American, I don't get to see Norwegian news here in the United States from any of our news or media outlets. So today, I'd like to take some time to learn about the current news and events happening in Norway right now, starting with billions set to save historic churches. Historic churches are, is Norway trying to get rid of historic churches? Well, I'm glad, I'm glad they're trying to save it. Are these like the Stav churches I've learned about? Or does it really take billions to save the churches? What is going on? Who, who wants to get rid of the historic churches, right? Uh, I'm glad Norway wants to save them. Fewer Norwegians took part in last week's Easter church services around the country. But the churches themselves are widely viewed as an important part of Norway's cultural heritage. Oh, interesting. I don't know how religious Norway is or how many Norwegians go to church. I mean, it, it says right here that fewer and fewer Norwegians are going to Easter church uh, last week. But they, Norwegians do consider the churches to be part, uh, important part of Norwegian culture and heritage. That makes sense. Now the government plans to invest around 500 million noke a year on church renovations over the next three decades. Okay, so are Norwegians happy about this? So this is church renovations? Are the churches starting to like fall down? Are they getting too old? Or uh, Many of Norway's historic churches are in need of repairs, like here at Ulnes Kerke in Valdres, and they can now apply for state funding. Oh, wonderful. Um, the churches are central and nor local Norwegian communities as active churches, gathering places, and cultural landmarks. Okay, this makes sense. When they said billions, um, this says 500 million. That's different than billions. Is Norway going to spend billions on this? Because that would be a lot, uh, even though the churches are important. I don't know. Just an interesting detail I saw. All right, cool. That's nice. Let's keep going. Metal stars shined on Easter Inferno. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> metal, metal stars on Easter? Is this another Norwegian Easter thing like that I don't know about? Uh, metal music? Uh... Dark forces from around the world gathered in Oslo for what's become an Easter tradition. <laughs> what? As solid as any. Norway's Inferno Metal Festival with 60 bands treating fans to four fearsome but friendly days of screaming extreme music in a dizzying array of styles and subgenres. No way. <laughs> is this like a Norwegian thing or <laughs> I've heard about the Norwegian black metal I learned about that I know that's a thing is that what this is the black metal look at this photo oh my god look at that <laughs> they are getting into it look at this fire um yeah here in America we do not associate uh metal music and fire with Easter <laughs> That's so funny. So this is this is becoming an Easter tradition, at least in Oslo, and it's a Inferno Metal Festival. Sixty metal bands. It's a festival in Oslo, and it's around Easter time. What does this have to do with Easter? I, I'm just curious. Uh, all the damned fun takes place within a few blocks in downtown Oslo when offices and stores are closed for Easter holidays. I actually think, funny enough. In a lot of places here in the United States, a lot of people would actually get, like, offended by something like this. A lot of Americans who are religious, especially, wouldn't like associating Easter with this fire, demonic, metal music scene. 
Um, I th I think it's all in good fun. <laughs> like what? Just do whatever you want to do. But I think a lot of Americans actually would kind of have a problem with this. This is time for good Christian Norwegians to go to church, for others to head for mountain skiing and springtime sun, and for others, it's the perfect time to celebrate a music culture that has <laughs> profound darkness at its heart. It's so funny because I don't associate Norway with, like, demonic darkness, metal, fire music, um... Or Easter. I, I don't think of Easter as that as well. So it's quite contradictory to me. Um, it's at the Oslo's Rockefeller Music Hall is center of the action. Okay. They might look frightening and have unusual names. But they're generally nicer to deal with than some of the other guests. <laughs> so sometimes the metal fans and the metal artists are even nicer than the quote-unquote normal people just celebrating Easter. That's how it works sometimes. <laughs> this is so hilarious. Uh, cool. That is very, very cool. I like that story. <laughs> Metal in Easter. Okay. This next one says, defense buildup takes shape. This is like, okay, so this is a complete change up here. This is about Norwegian, like, military defense, maybe? Um, first, first came news this week that far more young Norwegians face... An expanded military draft. Oh, really? Is there is there a military draft going on in Norway? Like, uh, you you have to join the army. You're conscripted. Um, mandatory service in the Norwegian military. The draft. I didn't know that was a thing in Norway, and it's being expanded. Then came confirmation that the and Doya Air Station in northern Norway will be revived as a base for long-range surveillance drones. So Norway is, uh, man, making more young Norwegians join the military. And Norway is reopening an air station in northern Norway for surveillance drones. Um, it was a run-up to Friday's unveiling of Norway's highly anticipated long-term defense plan, which the government described as a historic boost that will strengthen all branches of the Norwegian military. Wow. This is something that I have been reading about a little bit in some of the other weeks that I've uh, looked at Norwegian news. There's been some stories about Norway really ramping up its military, really taking the threat of war very, very seriously, especially these days with, like, uh, Russia, Ukraine, particularly Russia. Yeah. Ensuring security for people in Norway is the government's most fundamental assignment, said Prime Minister, at a midday conference. We need defense that suits today's situation and threat levels. So Norway has basically decided that it's n it needs more military, more defense, and it's putting... A lot of plans into action right now to make that happen. How do Norwegians feel about all this? Are Norwegians very supportive of Norway expanding its military? I mean, even expanding the military draft, that's a big deal. Uh, it includes an aggressive and unpredictable neighbor to the north, yes, where Norway shares a border with Russia. Mm -hmm. Full-scale invasion of Ukraine two years ago changed everything forced both Norway and NATO members to end years of military decline and rebuild its own defense force as quickly as possible. So for the last, uh, for the last few years, Norway's military has been relaxing, declining. A lot of NATO has, uh, because we've had a time of relatively long peace. But that's all changing. Um, wow. Norwegian government is proposing... Additional defense investment of 600 billion, with a B, that's 60 billion U.S. dollars, oh my god, over the next 12 years? Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Defense budgets will be double what they are today. Norway is taking this very, very serious. Uh, Norway will be spending this on frigates, submarines, military vessels, 
to shore up the naval forces. Norway already has a new fleet of fighter jets, but needs to boost its air defense. Oh my god, this is very serious. These are military ships. Wow. Wow. This just really, really hammers it home to me. How seriously Norway is taking this threat of war and conflict. Wow, and it's starting to actually happen. Um, I heard Norway wanted to do this. Now it's actually starting to happen in real time. Wow. Labor union leader claims big victory? Who is this? Labor union leader? After months of heated debate over record high executive compensation and an unwillingness to share company profits, Norwegian union leaders have been fighting back. Oh, this is like Norwegian uh, worker unions, like that represent the Norwegian labor and workforce. Unions, yes, yes, okay, okay. They scored a big victory on Sunday after industrial employers finally agreed to solid pay raises after a breakthrough in financing for continuing education of workers. Nice. So this is for uh, industrial employers in particular. Norway's industrial workers are getting a solid pay raise. And they can continue education. That's very good. So that's the point of these labor unions. This guy, Jorn Egum, scored a major victory. Their job is to try to negotiate on behalf of Norwegian labor, Norwegian workers. Um, cool. So this, something actually happened. They were negotiating and something finally happened. They ended up with raises of 5.2%. Um, and more for those with low income of less than 450,000 NOC. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, in this day and age, with, uh, how bad inflation is getting, everyone really needs a pay raise to even keep up with inflation. Uh, it's not even really a raise. You're just trying to keep up with your your money getting devalued by inflation, actually. It's very sad. That That's at least how it is here in America. I think Norway is facing similar problems. Um, this settlement is important because negotiations um, set the tone for most other labor negotiations throughout spring. Ah, and there would have been a major strike if the negotiations hadn't worked. There would have been a major strike in Norway. Wow, so this is getting quite serious. Interesting. Very interesting. I See, this is the kind of news that you do not, you just don't hear this stuff here in the United States. This is like really specific Norwegian economy, military, very specific Norwegian news. That's why I enjoy looking at this so much. Because you don't hear about any of this stuff. Any of this stuff from our normal American news outlets. Like, they don't talk about this. About Norwegian news like this in, in this much detail as well. So this is great. I feel like I'm the only American who <laughs> knows what's going on. And I'm happy for that. What else do we have? Sammy demonstrators cleared in court. Oh, I know this. This has also been a ongoing news story the last couple of weeks. There are Sami demonstrators who refused to pay fines um, because they were ignoring orders to end their occupation of a government ministry. This was a year ago. This was last year, at least. They were acquitted. Oh, they were cleared. They were cleared. Wow. Did most Norwegians want it to go this way? Like, these were just Sami demonstrators. They were just protesting. They were just, like, doing a protest, a peaceful protest, disrupting, like, a government ministry, but that's kind of how protests go. Um, and they were actually uh, going to face really harsh penalties, like, maybe even go to jail? I don't know, because they didn't pay fines for the protest that they did. Uh, okay. Anything else on this? Um, the activists were protesting the government's failure to remove wind turbines. That's what it is. The government was building wind turbines on Sami property. 
So these Sami people decided to do a demonstration, protest the Norwegian government. Okay, okay. Um, and then it turned out that those protesters got fined. But that's all being acquitted. That's all being thrown out. Um, it was acquitted on the grounds that they had the right to demonstrate peacefully. Right. That's what I thought as well. Isn't this just like, I don't know what Norwegian law is like, but in the United States, as long as you're peacefully protesting, you're not going to get put in jail or anything. Um, but they had, they had been given fines and they didn't want to pay those fines. And But it's all, okay, it's all been acquitted. Good, good. Um, the court ruled the order to end their demonstration, the police decision to physically carry them out and then find them illegally restrained their rights to demonstrate. So the police, the police actually might have done the wrong thing by physically carrying them out. They should have let them protest. That seems to be the Norwegian law. Cool. This was a huge relief and pleasant surprise for the Sami activists um, who... I think they were prepared to go to prison, basically, because they were not going to pay that fine. Uh, very good. What else do we have here? One more. New faces propel peace prize pro process? New face propels peace prize. Peace prize process. That's tough to name. That's tough to say. That's like a tongue twister. Peace prize process. Propel peace prize process. Propel Peace Prize process. That's, <laughs> that's tough to say. The young new leader of the Norwegian Nobel Committee isn't the only fresh face behind the Oslo-based process of awarding the Nobel Peace Prize. So this is about awarding the Peace Prize, obviously one of the most famous prizes, if not the most famous prize in the world. Um, and it has a new, a new leader. Um, it, now it's five... Uh, and they have another new colleague on the committee, and its five members need to find a new director. Okay, and who is this? This is Jorgen Weitfreitenes, um, who is the youngest leader of the Norwegian Nobel Committee earlier this year. And now they need to bring in a new director as well. Cool. Oh, the new director will be replacing a retiring Nobel Peace Prize director, Olav Jostad. Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, nothing <laughs> nothing too crazy going on there. That's good, because there's a lot of other crazy articles we read about today. That's just like normal um, goings on. The Sammy demonstrators cleared, that's good. Um, labor union, big victory, that's nice. Uh, Norwegian defense taking shape, that's intense. Metal, <laughs> metal, metal on Easter in Oslo. That's cool. <laughs> and saving the historic churches. Very good. I enjoyed this week of uh, Norwegian news. This was mostly really nice news to hear about. A lot of positive stuff. Sometimes this Norwegian news is kind of depressing, like bad news. But either way, I just like be staying up to date with this stuff. But this week was quite entertaining to me, quite fascinating, and uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment with your thoughts on any of the Norwegian news stories here today. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Norway and Norwegian culture and learning things about Norway, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.